Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and right now you're looking at my 350 gallon aquarium. This tank is home to my Central American cichlids. There are a few other cichlids in this tank, and there are also some South American catfish. But today I want to talk about the hierarchy in this aquarium. These fish are very smart, and they develop a social structure. And you have fish that are the most dominant, and that are the tank bosses. And then you have fish at the bottom that are like peasants in this aquarium, and it's completely natural. If you have a tiny aquarium or if you have a huge aquarium, these fish will develop their hierarchy. And today I want to point out the hierarchy in this aquarium. I want to show you every fish and talk about their rank and talk about the effects of being in that rank. So I currently have 13 cichlids living in this aquarium. And whenever you keep a group of aggressive fish together, there will always be one that is the most dominant fish, usually determined by size or by how aggressive an individual fish is. For a long time in this tank, my female pear size cichlid was the tank boss. And she was in that position because I had her longer than everyone else, so she was naturally the biggest fish. However, eventually fish started to catch up in size. Once my male black belt cichlid reached the same size as her, which is about 11 inches, he challenged her, and being a male, he was more aggressive, so he overthrew her, and he is now the tank boss. Now what's interesting about my black belt cichlid is that it seems like he learned a lesson from my pear size cichlid. He realized that being a tank boss of an 8 foot aquarium with rival cichlids close to his size, it was too much of a challenge. So instead of claiming the entire tank as his territory, he settled with a smaller, more manageable territory, the left half of the tank. Now this left an opening on the right half of the aquarium, so the next ranking fish, my male bifasciata cichlid, he claimed this side as his territory. So in this tank, there are actually two tank bosses. My male black boat cichlid controls the left side of the tank, and my male bifasciatus controls the right side of the tank. These two fish are able to share this position because of the size of the tank. However, if I were to put them in a smaller tank, only one fish will rule, and he will likely try to kill the other fish for even challenging him. So these two fish are at the top of the hierarchy. They seem to be content with their territories, so they don't fight. They do argue every now and then over territorial borders. However, nothing too serious. For the most part, these two males stay in their own territories. They'll bicker if one comes too far in the other's territory. However, when I am around, they kind of have a truce because they never know when I'm going to feed them. And I normally feed from the left side of the aquarium. So when I do feed, the black belt does allow the bifasciatus to come over to his side. And also when I'm around, if the black belt wants to go over to the bifasciatus' side, he'll allow him because for some reason when I'm around, they just drop all aggression. Well, not all aggression but they kind of have a truce. But when I'm not around, like if I'm on the opposite side of the fish room, I do recognize that they do stick to the rules. The black belt won't let the bifasciatus come to his side and the bifasciatus won't let the black belt come to his side. After the tank boss position, we have the next ranking fish, the brother of the dominant male bifasciatus. He's actually equally matched with his brother. They both are around 10 and a half inches. He actually used to be more dominant than his brother However, the last time I did a rescape on this aquarium, I ended up destroying his territory and his brother used that opportunity to take his position. Now, because these fish are equally matched, the brother that is more dominant is extra aggressive towards his brother because he's such a threat. So eventually I will be removing his lower ranking brother to end the blood rivalry. The next fish in the ranks is my female pear size cichlid. Now, because she used to be the tank boss, she's been getting a lot of negative attention from the current tank bosses. And it's obvious, she's the biggest threat. Physically, she's the biggest fish. She's a little bit bigger than my black belt, but she's a lot thicker than both my black belt and my bifasciatus. And on top of that, she used to be in control. She know what it feels like to be the boss. So they see her as the biggest threat. And because of that, they both harass her a lot. So eventually I will be taking her out to the aquarium as well, because these guys will never give her a break because she's the biggest threat. Not until they get bigger than her, they're gonna constantly harass her. Now the hierarchy gets interesting because we have a group of fish that are all about the same rank. And these are my females. I find that females don't really care to be tank boss. They don't really have the same ambition as males. All they want is a nice little territory and to be a little bit more dominant than the next female in the aquarium. So in this group we have my female pink finistratus. We have my female bifasciatus. We have my female dovi. And we have my female starry night cichlid. Now, they don't get as big as males, and um, they just naturally are not as aggressive as males, so they're not aiming for that top position 
but I do catch them battling with each other. My starry night cichlid, she has her own little territory and she'll fight any female that comes over there. My dual vice, she has the best territory out of all the females. She has this little cave and she'll fight any females that go over there. So the females kind of have a hierarchy amongst each other. And from what I've seen, no one really has the upper hand. Maybe the Dovi because she has the best territory, but they all are pretty much equal when it comes to the overall hierarchy in the aquarium. And it's pretty interesting because they are different sizes. Like my Bifasciatus, she's about eight to nine inches, while my Starry Night Cichlid is only about eight inches. And yet they all kind of balance out because the females, they kind of just choose a territory within a male's territory and they kind of just use that as their stronghold and fight other females so it's pretty cool it's also pretty confusing but yeah the females they're not really they don't really have the same goals as males males want to take over the entire aquarium females just want their spot eventually if they find a male they'll lay eggs in their territory and hopefully produce some offspring that's their intent however of course that's not going to be the case in this aquarium because i don't really have males to match all my females so the female cichlids pretty much hold down the middle position in the hierarchy and directly beneath them we have my female jaguar dovi hybrid she actually used to rank among the other females however when i did my last rescape i destroyed her territory and um it's been downhill since then of course she's in the same family as my dovi so my dovi is extra aggressive towards her and she really doesn't have anywhere to call home all the good territories are taken by the other females so she's forced to stay in this corner of the tank and I don't like seeing her there, so I'm just going to take her out of the aquarium. I think it's the best long-term solution because, as I mentioned, she's in the same family as the Dovi. And they're always going to find reasons to hate each other. So I think it's just best to take her out. So eventually, she's going to be removed from this aquarium. Finally, the bottom layer of the hierarchy consists of juvenile cichlids that I recently added to the tank. I purposely add juvenile fish to the tank because they automatically go to the bottom of the hierarchy. If I was to add an adult fish, all the other fish would challenge them and try to put them at the bottom of the hierarchy and that could result in that fish being killed. When you add juvenile and smaller fish, they automatically go to the bottom and then eventually as they grow, they can work their way in the ranks. So among these fish, we have my Finistrata cichlid, which is the biggest and the most dominant of the smaller ones. Um, this fish is about six inches. After that, we have my Feste cichlid, which is about six inches. I have another Feste that is about four inches. And at the very bottom of the hierarchy, we have my Zonata cichlid. Now, I do plan on removing this Zonatus because this fish is about 4 inches and he seems to be very intimidated by the larger fish in the aquarium. And this happens sometimes. It's just the individual personality of the fish. Some fish don't mind being around bigger fish. Some fish just are intimidated. They feel super afraid. So I'm going to be taking out the Zonatus. So that means the new bottom fish are going to be my Feste. But the Feste definitely don't mind. These fish are always eating and they're always trying to grow to get that higher position in the tank. Now I always wonder why these fish take the hierarchy so seriously. A lot of times it annoys me to see how aggressive they can be to each other, but it's their natural instinct. The most dominant fish always get first pick and always has the best chance of survival. If we look at my male blackbow cichlid, he chose his territory first and he chose the left side of the tank and it just so happens to be the side of the tank where I feed them. So he chose the side of the tank where it's most guaranteed to get a mill. Another reason why these fish chase ranks is because the more dominant fish has a higher chance of reproduction. If you look at my two bifasciatus, one of them is tank boss, one of them is not. You can see that there's an obvious difference when it comes to their colors. The more dominant fish has better colors. So if a female was to choose between the two, she would most likely choose the more dominant fish because he looks better. So this hierarchy is not just because these fish like to beat on each other, but more so because it's their natural instinct is how they survive in a wild. If it wasn't for the hierarchy, these species probably wouldn't exist today. We have to remember that these fish come from environments where there are predators and there's a limited source of food and there's just a huge competition just to survive. So that's the reason why you see some of these behaviors in aquariums. Now, of course, we do have some influence over the behavior of these fish in aquariums, because we get to choose who they coexist with, we also choose the size of their ecosystem. So their behavior and their aggression may be increased or decreased because of this. So that's a current look at the hierarchy inside of my 350 gallon aquarium. Of course, this is subject to change because eventually I will be taking out some fish. So that's going to affect the hierarchy. When fish are taken out, other fish will rise in ranks. 
And eventually I also plan on adding some more cichlids to this aquarium and they're gonna be tossed to the bottom and more fish are gonna rise again. So this hierarchy is ever evolving, is ever growing with the fish, but this is it as of today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comment section below. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one.